Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so happy to have you here. We're gonna dive right into your reading today. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. This is a general reading, so just keep that in mind. You only take what resonates and you happily leave the rest because if you don't, it can lead to con further confusion and we are trying to find peace and clarity here. All right, Spirit, please show us what does Pisces need to know today? What does Pisces need to know today? For Pisces, for Pisces, for Pisces. Please, Spirit, for Pisces, for Pisces, for Pisces. All right. Oh, wow. Okay, Pisces, stay grounded. Um. Oh, yeah. Yeah, stay grounded. Really and truly, like, that is where um, you are the strongest. I don't know if you're familiar with yoga at all, but in moments like these, when I see this, it is completely encapsulated by mountain pose. Um, you can Google it, but um, I have no idea what Google is going to tell you. It's basically standing and then lifting your shoulders up, dropping them back and dropping them down. Um, making your legs be, you know, as strong as they can possibly be and elongating the neck and reaching the crown chakra up to the sky. And as you're doing this, imagine the two energies pulling you in two directions. You imagine like the roots growing down from your feet into mother earth and just really grounding you, centering you, filling you full of positive ions and positive energy that you have the strength to endure whatever's in front of you. And then your crown chakra up to the heavens so that all of your decisions, all of your choices, all of your, um, everything that, you know, will be a marker of this time is going to reflect your highest and best. Like this is where you're changing your life. Um, so what I see is this, that, that energy, right? Um, and, and I see there may be things coming in to shake you, or this can be things that have already happened that have shaken you, that have caused you to find your ground, to find your center, to find your, your, you know, it's, it's hard to say what exactly it is, but when I do it at times, I feel just so connected to the earth. And then other times I feel so connected to the heavens, but when you, when you get it and you can feel truly both, it's, it, you do feel more powerful. You do understand what it means when you say you're limitless, you know, um, you really are. And because you have this capacity. So there, there is just this energy of, you know, um, there are so many ways for the river to find the ocean. I'm sorry, I'm getting hit with a lot of like really strong messages right here. There are a lot of ways for the rivers to find the ocean, but they will always find the ocean. And there's no right way to do it. I am getting though, there is a best way. And um, the best way feels like this way where you're grounded and centered, you're the pillar of your own consciousness, your, your main guiding factor is you getting your needs met, you know, um, prioritizing your own strength in the situation. And then with the, um, crown chakra it's really tapping into the intuition and allowing the intuition to guide you through um you know opening yourself up to conversation even with the divine of you know please guide me please show me the way please protect me please whatever it is that you feel like you need um you know in times like that it's even you know i don't i don't necessarily feel like this is like you know the worst thing in the world i think it's just a bit of a jarring or surprising or unexpected energy um and and again like i said for some of you these are the past positions on the card so this is something for some of you that has already happened like it may have been something that at first really seemed like it was just taking over your life or it was like all you could think about or it was just the most pressing thing 
And now it's sort of like, okay, you know, I'm ready for it to be over. And this is sort of more the present moment. With the 23, it's a five, things are changing. Um, and then you have this rock and you see it's like life springs eternal. This, this card holds so much hope and promise for me. Um, you know, um, it, it's almost as if the tree is growing out of the strength of the rock. Like normally trees are buried in the earth and we don't see the roots and they're, you know, in the earth is soft and it, conforms to the branch but here the branch has to conform to the rock and the rock is able to give this tree everything that it needs and the both the tree and the rock I feel are you you know so there's this energy of just like it is going to be okay um and with the stars in the sky I'm getting like divine timing like it you're you're going to re research re you're coming out of it, you know what I mean? If you haven't already, you're coming out of it. Um, but it's also the reminder with the storms right in front of that that new growth that, you know, without the rain, you know, the tree doesn't survive. Um, so it is, it is sort of, I feel like almost like, uh, this is how I always feel about tarot and, and why I feel so incredibly fortunate to be a tarot card reader. Um, is that it gives you the distance between you and, and life events. Like you can look at the cards and you can actually know what they represent. Like this is why I'm showing you the cards so that your own intuition can give you messages about what they mean and the messages that they carry. And so you, you yourself can look at it. And if I, we were to sit in conversation and talk about it, you know, you might cry, you might get upset. I mean, sometimes you'll cry even watching tarot card readings, but but the the thing is, it gives you this space. It gives you this, you know, it gives you this distance between you and what you're experiencing. And if you really think about it, that distance always exists. It it never is not. It's just that we're not looking at life that way. We we are in it. We are so in it. We're not separating ourselves from our thoughts. We're not separating ourselves from what's happening. We, we are just like literally these little open energy sponges that are just kind of having all of this stuff sort of come at us and affect us and make us feel things and make us think things. And then we're attaching to those thoughts and those feelings. And then, you know, we're kind of, we get reactionary and then we're like, okay, I don't feel good. I don't like the way this feels. Let me change something outside myself. Or we say, I was content then, I felt good about my life then, I felt, I felt like I was, you know, in a good place. And now suddenly, I don't feel like I'm in a good place. So, you know, then we may, you know, try to create scenarios in our mind or try to lessen our blow by sort of denying that it's actually happening. Instead, you know, when we keep it all out in front of us and we give ourselves that space and that distance between us and what's happening and we realize, like, our eyes don't do the seeing. Our ears don't do the hearing. They're the vehicle for us to see through. They're the vehicle for us to hear through. Like, it's us, you know, in here, you know, in your body, that is interpreting everything that is coming at you, but they're not the same thing. And, and it's hard to get that separation, but tarot always reminds me of that separation. It always reminds me that like, it's just me looking down on these cards and reading them and figuring them out and understanding them. Um, and I think that there's something here about, you know, giving yourself that distance, giving yourself that reminder just a gentle reminder even if it is through your breath just you know when you start to feel yourself getting upset or you start to feel yourself getting reactionary to just stop you know take some deep breaths you know inhale exhale I even say inhale peace exhale you know whatever is ready to be let go is what I usually say which is a lot when you're exhaling um but um but anyway, do whatever works for you, right? And then just bring yourself back into the present moment. And um, because when you do that, you're going to be having access to your intuition. You know, people will always say like, I got disconnected from my intuition in that moment. Yeah, 
because you were reacting because you were there was no separation between you and what was happening you're safe in here you know what you're safe in here and and it's up for you to interpret what is happening outside you and to kind of keep that distance and to sort of depersonalize it um and then on top of it if you can you know look on the bright side of life always look for the positive when especially when something is especially triggering um and this is not toxic positivity this is the energy of doing what is healthy for you and you'll know it's healthy for you because you feel better um but when something is happening that um well, like you all know, my mother-in-law is in the hospice. And by the way, the power of prayer never ceases to amaze me. Yesterday, when you guys were all praying for her, she had her best day ever. Um, you know, and and it's like, you know, um, I, like I was talking to my husband yesterday and I said, well, you know, if she passes away, and he said, when? And, you know, he like corrected me and said, when? And I was like, ah, um, but the thing is you know there is a part of you that just sort of wants to cling and wants to be like no we can fix this still you know or like maybe she you know like you know you just there is that part of you that you know really always wants to sort of hold on to hope or wants to be a little bit in denial or wants to say well she had a good day you know um but you know i mean i don't know it's just like there's just this energy of staying really, really true to yourself, knowing that this is the time for you to remain focused. This is the time for you to show up for yourself, to be your own rock of energy. I, I recommend, you know, when you put your feet on the floor, just go into mountain pose for a moment. Just start your day like that. I started doing that a while ago and I just feel like, and I do it right before I go to bed. And like when you do that, it's like bookends of your day. The energy starts and it completes and then we sleep and then we can do it again. And it helps me to like let go of things, oddly enough. Um, so anyway, you guys, um, just take it as it resonates. But, um, but it feels like there's been some shakiness here, Pisces, for some of you. I don't know what this is. Here, let me get this one. Sorry. Oh. Uh, wow. All right, you guys have, you make me feel ways I've never felt before. And I'm sorry for all the things I wanted to say, but didn't. And then you had this group fall out, so I'm going to read it. I need to sort things out before I can come to you. It's you. It's always been you. I want to build my world around you. I'd rather stay in my comfort zone, and I'm navigating my way home to you. So you can see in there there's two different energies, and it does feel a bit wishy-washy. You know what it feels like? It feels like someone who tried and tried repeatedly to muster the courage to show up for a situation and just really chose their comfort zone, um, you know, and ultimately. And when I see these cards that are the ones that came out, um, wow, <laughs> guys, what's going on? Um, these two cards that came on out are like, um, you make me feel ways I've never felt before, which makes people feel vulnerable and insecure. I'm sorry for the things I wanted to say, but didn't. This person didn't, didn't step up. They didn't rise to meet the challenge that was in front of them. You know, um, it's clearly a soul contract and, um, someone's letting you down and, On the bottom of the deck, it says, I'm working on me right now. So, you know, sometimes that's a positive, right? Sometimes they're working on them and they're going to figure it out for themselves and then they're going to be able to, like, come back. I do feel, like, in the general scheme of things, that is a small fraction of energy. Um, because most people, it's like, if they can find a way out or a way to avoid 
dealing with something especially tied to a soul contract if you don't if this is all very much resonating with you you may want to watch jen bushman um a couple of weeks ago she put out a video uh, talking about soul contracts if you have questions about it the answers might be there and like i'm not super duper familiar with jen bushman but she i've seen her interviewed on other channels that i am much more familiar with um and i did watch that video and i think it's full of amazing information so um anyway if this is resonating with you i'm just gonna throw you over there to jen bushman and it's spelled exactly like it sounds i think um, but I'm sure you'll find it. If you do Jen Bushman's soul contracts, you probably definitely will. So that's what it feels like. It feels like there's a soul contract here and someone's not stepping up to meet there. They're not, um, they're, they're not, it's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to grow. And it feels like this person is not wanting to do that. Oh, geez, Pisces, this, this energy has been coming out for a while for you guys. Okay, i got to put my glasses on to read the whole thing. You are, okay, first of all, these two fell up upright, and this one fell up in reverse, face down. So I'm actually going to start here, even though I normally start with these. Okay, so you do have, this person has changed since you interacted with them in the past. They will either match your vibration or you will find that you are both too different now. Wow, that energy. Oh, man. I don't know if that, I don't know how many private readings this energy came out in yesterday. Um, but I, I have been feeling this energy a lot. It's like, you know, when two people are in a contract with each other and they face the same experience at the same time together you have the opportunity to go, okay, what am I supposed to learn from this and learn it or like open yourself up to the experience of it, or you can get completely freaked out by it and shut down and, and, and avoid it and not learn from it and just give up on it really. Um, and unfortunately a lot of people choose the latter. Um, so I kind of feel like you were in some kind of soul contract. Someone didn't show up for you, Pisces. And they they just they they just didn't have the bravery to be vulnerable is how it feels to me. And which can show up as a lot of things. Um and I think they have changed and you have changed and it feels like you have gone in opposite directions. This may just be coming to the light now. Um Okay. But let me tell you, you are attracting a high vibrational soul match. This connection will feel effortless, unconditionally loving, and stable. You are ready for someone who meets you at the place you meet yourself. So for some of you, this can be the past person if they chose to allow whatever this experience was to elevate them, then you may now be a frequential match. Otherwise, I feel like it's it's a new person. This is the energy that keeps coming out. The songs and signs that you've been seeing are reminding you that you are in alignment with an important message about your person, situation, tune in and follow the guidance. This is crazy. I had so many signs and synchronicities in my readings yesterday, including um, I don't think this person would mind, but I won't even mention the name, but one of my clients literally was like, um, sent me an email and was like, I just had this feeling that, um, there's something about this name. And anyway, there was, a, it was more complicated than that. But anyway, she literally said, Mary, and that's the name of my mother-in-law. I literally almost died. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> and that is a huge sign of synchronicity and confirmation. And also, you know, I'm not one to ask for help or to, um, I've just like learned how to do a lot of things on my own or like, I will ask my husband, but like, I'm not one to be like, oh, hey, 
And it actually surprised me yesterday when I asked you guys to pray for my mother-in-law and then seeing her have such a good day. And then also um, just all the messages were so touching and so loving. And it is really nice to feel supported when you're going through a hard time, um, you know, just externally that there are people that, you know, care or, you know, offered that prayer for her, especially like that would mean so much to her. Like she has prayed so much for so many people in her life. Um, I mean, she lit candles for us like literally every day. She went to daily mass. She was like amazing. Um, but anyway, um, so I mean, you're like literally praying for an angel. That's, that's, we all just think of her like that. But, um, but anyway, I was so like, wow, you know, when you do seek help or when you, or, you know, when you do just allow yourself to open up and be like, Hey, I'm going through this. Like, it would be so lovely if you would do this. And then to have people go, we did it. It's really, it's such a good feeling. Um, and, and, um, and so I feel like I've learned like another lesson from you all, but I feel like with this energy, there's, it's like there's big ones and small ones. It's like, you know, and they may come from relative strangers. They may come from, you know, I feel like these are unexpected signs and synchronicities. And it's like, I feel if you're really tuned into your intuition, you're going to almost like realize it. And all of the thoughts that I just had, if I wheel them down into like one thought, it's kind of this, right? Because my mother-in-law, seriously, she's like an angel. There's nothing she wouldn't do for anyone. She And I, there's just countless people that she's helped and like just been such an angel too. But the thing is, it's there's this energy of like, there are angels among us. And sometimes we walk, run into a stranger or sometimes we come across someone and it may even have been, it may be that it, the person isn't an angel, but your angels or your spirit guides lined you up with it. They put a video in your YouTube feed that was something that you needed to hear or, you know, they, they're kind of guiding you in a certain path or, um, you know, so it feels kind of like there are some things that happen that are, um, really like creating shifts. But then it feels like there are also little things like, I don't know, the kindness of strangers or like someone that's going to come into your life and make you feel a little bit supported or even just for five minutes or for a moment. Um, I don't know. So just, it feels like an energy of just really being fully present in the moment and allowing your intuition to guide you and really listening to it. You know, if it's telling you something, you know, hear it. Don't question it. Don't doubt it. Go, okay, I'm doing it. Um, because I feel like you, it says you're attracting a high vibe soulmate. So, you know, and if, you know, if you're already in a relationship or if, you know, whatever, this may be the energy of where you attracted this person or this can even be a friend or a soul tribe or you may be in an elevating process where your vibration is raising and as that happens people that match that energy will come into your life um but it feels like it's um multi-faceted kind of energy um and also i am feeling this energy of you know the energy that we put out, the love, the the gratitude, the support, the nurturing, the kindness, the love. Um, I think I said love twice, but I mean, I could have just said love over and over again. Um, but the thing is, it comes back to us. It always does. And it comes back to us sometimes when we need it the most. Sometimes it comes back to us in forms that we recognize, you know, um, forms that we actually invested in. And sometimes it comes back to us from the most unique places. And I feel like Pisces, just be open to accepting that energy. The smile of a stranger that walks past, uh, I feel like, um, you know, it, it's all sort of like coming together in this moment for you. Um, Okay, on the bottom of the deck, you guys, you have this. There is an imbalance of give and take in this relationship. Pull back if you've been overgiving. 
yourself to this person for they have been repelled by this energy. On the other hand, give more if you've been holding back too tightly for they won't continue to chase you. Okay, see a lot of times we have been sort of programmed to believe the more that we give, you know, the more like sometimes people think indispensable I become to someone. Um, and you know, the, the truth is though, there is a fine line where people are like, why are you giving me so much? You know, what, why do you feel that you need to give me so much? What are you hiding or what is wrong with you? Or, um, you know, it's not attractive or, um, you know, too much of a good thing is too much. Right. And, you know, as empaths and as, you know, compassionate beings, which, you know, I really think that Pisces is one of the most compassionate signs, if not the most, um, there's this energy of you're already giving someone a gift with your presence, with your energy, because you're seeking to understand them. That's such a gift in today's world. Most people are seeking to be heard or to get their point across or to prove that they're right before you have even had a chance to express your point of view. Um, and so when you, um, walk into any situation with that empathetic, compassionate heart open, where you're seeking to understand the other person and where the other, other person is coming from, and you're seeking to understand what's motivating this, you are already giving someone a tremendous gift. When you go beyond that to, um, you know, to forgive, to let people off the hook, to, um, these things, that's a tremendous gift. And, you know, if, if the person that you are giving all these gifts to isn't earning it, they know that. And I literally was watching a video last night and it was about, um, the one that got away. This guy was just walking around interviewing people and asking them, who is the one that got away? Tell me the story. And this girl said, I, I just, honestly, at the end of the day, I just didn't feel worthy of it. And sometimes when you give too much, people feel unworthy because they know that they didn't do what was needed to earn it. So you always want to be careful not to over give it, even though you can see so many reasons and so many, um, you know, like I'm good. I, my cup run is over. You know, I can afford to give this. I'm not going to miss it. It'll be fine. You know, when, when you tell yourself those things, um, like I can do it, I can afford to give it. They need it bad. Like I need to just give it to them. But, but when you do that, you know, that person receives it in that messaging wrapped up that way of, oh, I see that you're kind of a mess. And so I'm going to give this to you. And all of, you know, because our intention, even though it's beautiful, even though it's like generous and kind, um, it's also, you know, it's also, everybody wants to be, <laughs> even though it may not always seem like it, at the end of the day, you know, everybody wants to be that person that's respected, that person that's admire that person that's getting recognition for being successful or whatever it is, you know, the same things that we all want. I mean, that's the craziest thing is that we are all so similar. And when somebody has an experience that puts them in a vulnerable state or in that scarcity mindset or in that place of woundedness, um, it, then any time someone comes at them with that energy of, Oh, I see you're wounded. Let me bandage you you're not giving that person to he the chance to heal themselves. And I, and it, it seems so counterintuitive because it seems like, well, you know, even our mothers would put Neosporin in a Band-Aid on. Like I got me Mercure Chrome. Do you guys remember that? Um, a seventies child. Um, but anyway, all I'm saying is that, um, it creates an imbalance and, when imbalances happen, the universe won't support it. It's not a sustainable connection anymore. On the same token, if you're afraid to get hurt and you don't want to open yourself up completely, and so you hold back 
then you're giving the other person no choice but to overgive in order to keep the relationship together in a toxic way. And that too is unsustainable for the long term. So you want to be sure that it, it is as balanced as it possibly can be. And that you're, it's important for you, therefore, to recognize your worth and to love yourself. Because if you don't, then you don't understand the value of what you're giving people. Okay. So you will accept less than that in return. You know what I'm saying? Your love is priceless. Okay. So what is going on here? This feels, I'm getting like the end of the road type vibes. Like I'm getting like it's the end of the road type vibes. Like I don't even know, but that song, I think it's Boys to Men or something. It's the end of the road. That song? Yeah. So none of this is ever meant to frighten you. Nothing divine would ever frighten you, you know? Um, I guess that it, it, it's really just here to kind of prepare you or to inform you or to, you know, help you figure this out. Okay, okay. All right, so what I see is the Six of Cups, the Eight of Pentacles, the Devil, and the King of Cups on the bottom of the deck. Pisces, this has been an opportunity for you to learn how to master your own emotions, um, whatever this is, and that's how it's coming across. So, um, and it may, it, like, if this is a soul contract, right, then it's probably that person's opportunity as well, all right? But I see you are succeeding. Wow. Oh my gosh, you guys. All right, I don't know. So there, it feels like there may be some kind of conversation that's coming. Um, with the Ace of Wands in reverse, this is, um, for me, an energy of like something that has potential, but we won't find it out. Um, and then you have the Star card, and then you have the Fool card on the bottom of the deck. And this is saying like, Sometimes in life, there is this energy of just knowing that however something has gone, there's there's peace that comes with this conversation, whatever it is. Um, that, that, that everything is exactly as it's supposed to be and you are exactly where you are right now for a reason. Um, and you're exactly where you're meant to be. Like, this is all okay. It's all fine. You're going to heal. You're going to recover if that's something that you're worried about. And with the star card energy, you will have a return of hope and optimism to your life. Um, and the, with the star card and the full card, they're single characters. So it is just definitely giving me this feeling of walking out of the situation single. But with the star card and the full card, this is an insanely empowered energy because it's basically like something that isn't meant to work out. And because of that, it's giving you the freedom to pick back up on your soul path or on this journey um, that you that's meant for you, okay? So remember, please only take this, what resonates, and don't take the rest, okay? But this is what you have been working on your shadows, Eight of Pentacles and the Devil. This is the clarification for the Devil. And this is telling me there's going to be some kind of conversation where you realize you've done the work and someone else hasn't done the work. And that, you know, you're able to say, okay, I can let this go. I, I, can, I can sort of accept that I may never know, I, I may never realize whatever the full potential of this was, but I'm okay with that because I know that there's a bigger plan and I know that there's something else out there for me. And it feels like almost immediately there is something worth taking a leap of faith on here. Um, but overall, this is um, it's coming to a place of peace about something that didn't work out. Um, and once you come to that place of peace, and just accept that you will never know or that, you know, this is, this is fine, that, that it is like this. 
Um, it frees you up to like heal and to realize that where you are is exactly where you're meant to be and that um, this is actually an opportunity for you to kind of, I feel like, come back to your soul path for you to really listen to your own gut and to your own instincts and figure out what, what this path has in front of you. Um, with the Six of Cups, you know, there's always going to feel be a feeling of nostalgia um, associated with whatever this time in your life is or whatever it was. With the Six of Cups, it's like you may have, this may be someone um, that you have known since you were a kid um, or have had a relationship with since you were a child. Um, or like you may just feel that way or say that way or... Um, I, I feel like it's someone that you have a, a long history with. And with the King of Cups, there's just this energy of, um, I feel this is a soul mate that helps you to understand how to master your own emotions. Um, like it feels like that's almost the purpose. Please only take what resonates and leave the rest. Like, you know, these are general messages. They're not for everyone, but this is definitely for someone. And, um, you know, I just... It can be very triggering, especially if you're, like, only will only want one particular answer. Oh, man. Okay. You have the hangman, the nine of wands, and the two of cups. I'm going to do it like this. Um, <laughs> you know, Pisces, the hangman energy is your energy. And if you can see, I this deck is like literally one of my favorites. Let me tell you what it is because I know people are going to ask me. Um, it is... The Experiential Tarot by Julie Comfort. Um, I have no idea where I got it. I've had it for a long time. Okay, so the hangman in this particular deck, she's like drowning. Um, and But she's not because she, the only thing above water is what she needs to have above water to basically survive. So it feels like there's been some heavy emotions. Um, and we've kind of moved through a bit of this time period or of this space, just surviving, um, just sort of, uh, I have to focus on this one thing and then I'll get through. And then you have the nine of wands here. And this energy feels like the, the nine of wands is known as the wounded warrior. And so it's kind of like, okay, you know, this is that energy of almost like pulling ourselves up out of this. Um, you know, slowly but surely, just persevering, just not giving up um, a little bit at a time is kind of how I'm getting it. Um, but it was enough, okay? And it's bringing you into some kind of relationship uh, or some type of soulmate situation here. And, um, you know, I there's this one reader a long time ago who used to say, tell, tell me, or, you know, to use this phrase of um, give me my twin flame or someone better or give me my soulmate or someone better or like give me this person specifically or someone better. And this is, I don't know why this is reminding me of this. You have judgment here. So for some of you, this can be a past relationship that is being, that it almost may have seemed like all hope was lost, um, but it, it, it is getting another chance to be reborn for others of you. This relationship is meant to go. We're not meant to hold on to the relationship. We're just meant to hold on to ourselves. And that may be why it was so treacherous. Um, because you couldn't, you you couldn't, you could only give that so much focus. Um, and the thing is, there is something beautiful waiting on the other side. There is a reward for pulling yourself up, for persevering, and for not drowning, <laughs> for surviving. I mean, honestly, that's how it's coming across. Again, a very dramatic reading. I am not intentionally trying to have it that way. 
Um, but with the judgment here, this can be the resurrection of you after whatever this is, after surviving, after making it through. This is a profound life moment here. This isn't something small. Um, it, it, it's like, um, yeah, it's, it's darkness. Um, but it feels like it's in the past and it feels like you have already done this and it feels like your reward is coming in. Um, with the judgment card here, the judgment can always be, look at this card. Oh my gosh, you guys, like I almost missed this. You see the third eye? This, you guys got to listen to your intuitions right now. You got to be really tapped in. Um, but there's this energy of, um, you know, either this relationship is getting another chance or you're getting another relation, another chance at that dream or that desire that you had that you didn't let go of, even when you were just trying to survive. Okay. The High Priestess. And the Knight of Cups. And the World card. Ah, uh, this there's so much relief in this energy that I'm feeling. Um the high priestess with the knight of cups. This is giving me, you know, a return to self. It is plugging in, it is tapping into that intuition. It is, you know, you know, um, like, okay, when you're a kid and you're coloring with crayons, it's very crude. It, and in the beginning, it's hard to stay in the lines. Um, and then you learn how to stay in the lines. And then, you know, the older you get, maybe you pick up a paintbrush and you learn to paint. And, you know, you become an artist, okay? But when you were first starting out, it's like a very crude energy that you didn't totally know what to do with or totally how to control. You just, you just did it because you liked doing it. And you kept doing it because you still liked doing it. And then you ended up um, really mastering the skill. There's something about that energy here of, um, you know, honing a skill and coming out of this in a way of, um, where you, um, have a sort of like a sense of quiet pride. Like you are not the same as you went into it, but even in your energy, even in your aura, there is this strength. There is this like I'm a warrior. Like I I know what I'm made of. I battled back from some stuff. Um and I feel like someone finds it attractive and I feel like they're coming in. I feel like they are gonna follow their heart. I also feel like Pisces, this Knight of Cups represents the energy of you following your heart. Um of you you know being able to you know when we master our emotions and our emotions don't cause us to like go up and down and make choices that aren't good for us. Um, we can listen to our emotions and let them guide us and let them lead us safely, you know, without feeling like they may lead us astray or get us in over our head or overpower that part of us that was going red flag, red flag, <laughs> red flag, you know, all that time ago. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, because ultimately, and usually I think it is with Pisces, that it is following your heart and your desire to love and be loved and to connect with other people that can sometimes get you to invest in people who are not amazing choices or who it's like you you intuitively knew um, because you're the high priestess that there were issues like you saw it but you let your mind convince you that it was fine and so um, because you know all of you got juiced up and excited about it which is you know it's okay you're just gonna learn lessons that way but this is the completion of that with the world card on the bottom of the deck it's like no more are our emotions going to lead us like that without our mind saying to us, the price of your peace is too great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, we're able to follow those emotions without getting ourselves into jeopardy. 
um, or something like that. Um, we're able to like hone that skill of having emotions, listening to emotions, listening to our intuition, and sort of, it almost feels like join up the two powers and, um, and never allow ourselves to be fooled again. That's really how it feels. You know, you're going to see your, I feel like you have a soulmate coming in and it's like, you're going to know, you're going to know, you're going to know, you're going to know because of the way that you feel intuitively and emotionally when you're with this person, it doesn't shake you up. It doesn't give you, it may not give you butterflies, you know, um, I think it was Buddha who said, you know, when you meet the one, you will not, your knees won't shake and you won't have butterflies and you won't feel, you know, like you're having an out-of-body experience. You, you will feel totally calm and totally good about it. Um, not to say that you're not going to have moments like that, right? But like, you're just going to know. Um, so anyway, guys, I feel like this is the major closing out of a cycle. You've had the world card. You've had the judgment card. If you have been going through a difficult time or you have been through the ending of a relationship recently, um, you know, be kind to yourself um, because I really feel Pisces like you are exactly where you're meant to be and you are coming through to the other side with this world card energy and there are, are endless possibilities in front of you. And I feel like you do have some quiet, special skill that um, is going to help guide you and you will go far. I mean, I really feel that way with the world card. I, I feel for some of you, you may actually even travel. Um, but anyway, a cycle is completing. What is the best possible outcome for Pisces in this situation, Spirit? What is the best possible outcome? All right. The Magician. The Seven of Swords is spinning. The Death card, yeah, over top of it. And the Knight of Swords in reverse, damn. With the Hangman. Okay, so I feel like this is talking about your, this, this, past situation is coming to a completion with the knight of swords in reverse and the death card and the seven of swords turning there's someone that has been an energetic thief in your life here pisces someone who has i feel like you know been a taker not a giver and um this is coming to an end you know it's imbalanced it's been imbalanced and it's coming to an end and with the magician and the hangman here you are the alchemist of your own life this is your opportunity to, to say, okay, a soul contract is coming to an end. Um, what, what can I um, learn from the situation? Well, how can I get the most from the situation? Asking your spirit guides and your saints. It's like when you're in mountain pose and you're extending, elongating the neck and extending the crown up into the ethers. Hey, can you guys help me see here everything that I need to see so that I don't need to repeat this again? <laughs> you know, um, with the hangman here, you will look back on this time and you will feel very differently about it at some point than you do now. And I feel like um, maybe even by December, the 12s are really standing out to me here. Um, but this is just an energy of knowing that you will put this into perspective. Um, but with the Magician card, there is this energy of, uh, and maybe for some of you, you've already put it in perspective. Um, and return to yourself with the hangman energy. But with the magician card, this is, hey, you are an alchemist and you can turn anything into anything else. You know, you can turn some nothing into something and something into something else. And, you know, you can turn a relationship into the gift that you learn as you walk away. You can turn a relationship into a different kind of relationship. You know, the possibilities are endless, but this is an empowering point of view and an empowering perspective for you to have at this time that to remember you are the alchemist you are um you are um <laughs> a limitless creator and manifester and an alchemist you know you you do have the power to change the narrative of the story or to make it what you want it to be by how you handle it, by the tools that you use and by the way that you navigate it. 
And if you're trying to see it from all different perspectives, that's a high, high practice. So, all right, so let me see. What advice do you have for Pisces? So the net result here is that you're going to step out of this situation in power. And you will have a return to your own energy. Yeah. There is a soulmate coming for you. Yeah, it's on the distance. It's coming in. Oh, the only thing holding this up, Pisces, um, is your own way of thinking. You know, it's letting go. I, I hope that you guys do watch that Jen Bushman video. If I remember it properly, like she even talks about seed thoughts and the difference between seed thoughts and soul contracts. You know, some of the, th the lessons that we're learning are based on a seed thought that we have, like I'm not good enough or, you know, and once we release that seed thought, we can let so many other things go in our life. Like it, it starts a ripple effect. So, um, I don't know if you, if, if you're still here and this reading is resonating with you, um, maybe, you know, look for that video. I, it was, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, and I have no idea what the title would be, but it would say something about soul contracts. Um, but I mean, that may be her entire channel. Like I said, I'm not that familiar with her. Um, but you, you, ha it, the choice is in your hands, Pisces. Um, to, to let go of anything that could ever stand for you as a blockage for what is meant for you. Um, and you know, it, it, it looks like here it's freeing yourself from some type of way of thinking that's kind of kept you entrapped. Um, with the three of wands, you, you do have a bright future and there is a lot of happiness in front of you. And there are things that are already in motion on their way towards you. So this is just a very hopeful and optimistic card. Um, it is also a card about divine timing. So really, this is, you know how they say, we can't make anybody else do the work and we can't do the work for anybody else. We can only do the work on ourselves. And um, that's coming to me. And then the other thing with Rumi um, he says, seek not love, but seek instead the burdens you have built within you against it. And that's what I feel like you're having a little moment. You're closing out some kind of cycle and you're having a little moment where you're, it feels like the way you're part of this perseverance energy and part of this magician energy is deciding here and now while you're in the present moment with it possibly for some of you or you are have come to the other side of it that you absolutely refuse to let your past dictate your future and that you absolutely refuse to allow that experience to create any kind of obstacle or blockage within you that would prevent you from have accepting, I'm sorry, this is a little of a graphic lover's card, but to accepting, you know, the love that you deserve and that's a new soul contract in. Um, you know, you, you don't want this past experience to prevent you from being able to have that. All right, Pisces, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, let me know if that one resonates, guys. Okay, here we go. If I can, I, I, I always say this and then I think I'm not very good at it, but if I can remember, um, I will, um, because I'm not all oh, totally here, but um, I will try to find that video and link it somewhere for you. Um, and like I said, I'm not totally familiar with her. I can't tell you if I believe everything she says or not. And it's good to decide for yourself. If you're dealing with a water sign, I wish I treated you better, protected. You are safe and divinely guided. I know you don't feel the same. Do I still have a chance? Intuition, you already know the answers you seek, and I love you. Guys, how many of those messages did we really have in this reading? All right, for fire sign, please, spirit. Okay. I don't want to let you go. Past life love, your soul remembers this intense connection. I would do it all again. I hide my feelings. I still have feelings for you. I want you. If you are dealing with an earth sign, obstacles, unhealed wounds are blocking forward movement. I'm so attracted to you. Here and now, your true love is already a part of your life. I have too much to lose. 
soulmate. Your soulmate loves, accepts, and respects you. I want to tell you how I feel. We don't share the same values. And an air sign. Lesson. This person is in your life to teach you a spiritual lesson. Different pages. You and this person don't share the same vision. Just being near you is intoxicating. I'm in a committed relationship. I don't know why this happened. All right, guys, this is what I have for you today. I really hope it helps. I hope it brought you some peace and clarity. If it did, let me know. Thank you again for all the prayers up for my mother-in-law. I really, I, I do think that it helps. So thank you so much. Anyway, until next time, I'm sending you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Bye-bye.